President Trump there running the gamut uh, in a stump speech, his first rally since March 2nd. You hear him there talking about the Chinese virus as he uh, describes this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, he said it is fading away uh, and that he has done the right thing by the country. That uh, remains to be seen. He also bashing uh, Joe Biden, his expected opponent in November. And I want to go to A.J. Pittman, who is uh, an Oklahoma state representative out of Tulsa. Uh, uh, and has endorsed Joe Biden and Representative Pittman. I just want to ask uh, about President Trump's visit to Tulsa, what that means. And, and you know, one of the things that, that the president says is he's out on the road and Joe Biden's in the basement. What do you think of that? I think that we need a leader that will put people before politics. And that is what uh, Vice President Biden is doing by staying safe and making sure the country is staying safe and giving a drastic contrast to the words that the president um, right now is giving at his rally. Uh, we know that Tulsans are actively getting text messages saying that there's still room in the arena. Come on in. They're trying to pack it more than it already is. And we know and we can see from the State Department of Health, from the Tulsa Department of Health, that our numbers are rising and that it is not safe and that um, it's different than previously that 18 to 35 year olds are getting it and their numbers are on the rise. So we need a leader that is going to make sure that they are pressing the issue of everyone, keeping everyone safe. And that's not currently what the president is doing. And in these pictures, you don't see many people wearing masks there. And we should say, Representative Pittman, that that there are many, many empty seats in there. Uh, the president and his uh, campaign staff said there wouldn't be an empty seat. Uh, by some estimates, it's about two-thirds full. But I want to go to the to the fact that it's in Tulsa, Representative Pittman, yes. and that the significance of that, in particular at this moment in the country, after the killing of George Floyd and the uprisings, and Tulsa's special place in American history, as I, as I said earlier, a place I didn't even know about until I was a, a grown man, the race massacre there in 1921, all these forces coming together tonight. What do you make of that? It is it is hurtful and it is painful as the great great granddaughter of Abner Burnett, who is a Tulsa race massacre survivor because he got a tip to get out and make sure that our family was able to be safe. The fact that this rally is on the ground of soul that is still slaughtered with the blood of people that were killed in the race massacre, that we are still finding burial sites there, that families are still mourning loved ones who have not been laid to rest properly. It, it's frankly disrespectful. And it makes it look like um, African-Americans in the Juneteenth history and the Tulsa race massacre are afterthoughts to the president and that our history does not matter. He does not care about the Greenwood history. He does not care about our culture. And that is a stark drastic comparison to Vice President Biden who had a video made by his staffers of the importance of Juneteenth, who is actively trying to unite people and say that culture and history around this holiday matters. And we need to make sure that we are choosing a leader in November that is going to unite our country. We obviously see with the outcry and the outpour of protests throughout the nation, whether it's people of color and people that don't look like us, whites, Americans, African Americans, Native Americans standing arm in arm, that we want change, that we need a movement and that something in the system needs to change. But because if we do not change policy, then this system continues to be perpetual and it will continue to be like this for gener generations to come. Thank you, Representative Pittman. I just want to follow up on the, the people who were in the streets. President Trump saying at the opening of his remarks, we had some very bad people outside. They were doing very bad things. There has been no sign to our reporters. And believe me, you'd see it on the video because cameras are very good at catching it. Anything like that. There's been one arrest, a kindergarten art teacher who had a ticket to get in. She was wearing a Black Lives Matter uh, T-shirt. They didn't want to let her in. It ended up in an arrest. The notion that they were very bad people, they were peaceful protesters against President Trump. He described them as very bad people. But now to what we're seeing, even in a two-thirds full arena, the impact on public health. Uh, and I'd like to go now to Dr. Simone Wilds, who is an ABC News contributor and an infectious disease doctor. And, and Dr. Wilds, you know, when you look at this crowd, very few people, if any, wearing masks, cheering lustily uh, their candidate, their guy, in a closed in, uh, arena, 
thousands of people. What do you see from your medical perspective? From a medical perspective, I am very nervous about this. You know, a large rally with a lot of people, meaning they are not going to be able to protect themselves if they're not wearing masks. They're not going to be um, making sure that they're concerned about others with regards to social distancing. This is going to put it at the highest risk for the coronavirus, which is what we're all worried about. It's not about party lines. It's about our health. And we want to make sure that we take care of everyone. And Oklahoma right now is a state where coronavirus cases are rising rapidly. As Rachel Scott, our reporter, has, has told us, six Trump staffers, including two Secret Service members, have tested positive, uh, some of them since arriving in Oklahoma as part of the advance team. So it's there. Uh, do you expect to see cases out of this rally? Uh, Dr. Dr. Wilds? Then I closed it down to Europe early. Closed it down because I saw what was happening. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, Marcus uh, Moore, who has been on the streets and been in Tulsa for a couple of days, there, I'd like to ask you about the Trump campaign's preparations. Rachel Scott was, was talking about how they handed out masks there. Uh, yeah. How thoroughly were they trying to get people to pay attention? to the pandemic that is in the air in the United States and defend themselves accordingly. Well, one of the things that we know from uh, the, the Trump administration that they were uh, handing out masks and uh, hand sanitizer, and uh, th that was about about it. And um, when you talk to the people, many of them who have been camping out here for days, uh, it, it was kind of right down the middle. I mean, I talked to, uh, to one man who, uh, he's from Tulsa, uh, he brought his family here, and he said that he will very much wear a mask, that, that the coronavirus is, is a concern for him, uh, but it was not so much of a concern that he wouldn't come here to this rally. Mm. He felt like it uh, was important uh, for him to be here, to be here and for the world to see him. But on the same token, uh, Terry, uh, there were others who said they're absolutely not going to wear a mask. I talked to a young woman from Tyler, Texas, who's here. Um, she said, look at the survival rate. Uh, uh, incredibly high, uh, she said, and, and also uh, the the statistics in terms of how effective she questioned how effective the mask actually is. So mm. uh, for some people, uh, simply wearing a mask, uh, there's a sense that it is a political statement in and of itself. And so right. uh, being here uh, on the streets here in Tulsa, you get to hear both sides of that uh, of that issue. You do indeed. Thank you for that, Marcus, because uh, it has become a political statement.